In this episode, we're going to be developing the responsive header component that's going to feature at the top of all of our routes within our React.js application. Now, in order to manage the state within this component, we're going to be using a new concept called hooks within React, which was added in 16.8. Now, hooks effectively allow us to keep our components as functions and not have to rewrite them as full class components. So let's dive into the code and start creating this component. I'm going to open up the source directory and within this, I'm going to create a new folder called common. Now this common directory is going to house all of the components that are common across all of the views within a react.js application. Now within this, I'm going to create a new file called header.js. And it's within this that I'm going to define my new header.js component. Now I'm going to start off by importing the react library from react. And then I'm going to define this header component as a function. And I'm going to simply return for now. So I'm going to return a new nav component. And I am going to do a div within this, which has hello world, to keep it nice and simple for now. I'm going to add a semicolon to the end of that return statement. And then just at the end, after my function declaration, I'm going to do export default header like so. Now with this defined, let's see if we can import and use this component within a React.js app by opening up the app.js file. Now at the top of this component, I'm going to do the following. So I'm going to import header from common slash header like so. And then within the body of my code, I am going to remove the existing header and use this new header component. Perfect. Now with these changes made, you'll notice in the terminal in which our React app is running that it's complaining that the logo component or logo SVG is not used. So let's remove that now. And let's also delete the logo.svg from our project. Cool, with this in place, let's open up our Google Chrome and navigate to localhost 3000. Perfect. As you can see here, we've got a really simple application up and running, and it has successfully rendered our header component. So whilst we've managed to successfully render this component, it doesn't exactly look all that great right now. So let's fix that by navigating back into Visual Studio Code, opening up our header, and let's start making it responsive. So I'm gonna start off by adding some of the Tailwind CSS classes to the nav element. So I'm gonna do class name, equals flex item center justified between flex wrap and I'm going to give it a padding of six. Now this div I'm going to replace or modify. So I'm going to remove hello world and then I'm going to add class name as equal to flex item center flex shrink uh, zero text dark gray and margin right six. Now within this, we're gonna have our logo. So I'm gonna create a new span ele element. Uh, span class name is equal to font semi bold and text extra large and tracking tight. Cool. I'm going to close out that span element and then I'm going to add our logo, which is just going to be open graph image API, keeping it nice and simple for now. Now, the next thing we want to do is to define the hamburger menu item. So I'm going to do dev class name once again, and this is going to be block and it's going to be hidden when the screen is large. And then within this, we're going to have the button element. So button, and in this is just going to be an SVG. So I'm going to copy and paste the SVG code. And if you're following along, the code will be made available to you in the description of this video down below. Cool. So this is now in place. We also want to add some of the classes to this button element. So class name is equal to flex item center um, 
padding x is 3, padding y is 2, border, I'm going to want it to be rounded, text grey 800, border grey 800, the hover is going to be text grey 600, so make it slightly lighter, and then the hover on the border is going to be grey 600 as well. Now with these changes now in place, we can now go back into our application and you should be able to see the hamburger menu on the top right. And as you can see, whenever I hover over it, it does indeed go slightly lighter. However, one thing I have noticed is the rounder class should be rounded. Perfect. As you can see, that's added the rounded corners there. Okay, so at this point, we've managed to create the layer of our header component as it would look like on a mobile device. But obviously we're going to be rendering this on a desktop screen as well. So let's go back into the code once again and start creating the elements for our horizontal nav bar. So I'm going to start off by creating another div just below the block which will be hidden when the screen is large. And I'm going to give it a class name equal to... And I'm going to change the syntax up slightly here by adding a curly brace just before my quotes. And then I'm going to do large flex flex grow items center. And then I'm going to add a plus at the end of the line. Go on to the next line. And then I'm going to do parentheses nav bar open question mark. So if it is, I want width to be full and to use flex or I want to add the hidden class to this element. Cool. And then I want to close off the curly braces and then close off the tag. Perfect. So within the body of this div, I then want to define some of the links. So I'm going to do another div element with class name equal to flex, flex column, large, flex row, list none, large, ml, auto. And within this, I'm going to do two links. So a href is equal to forward slash for now, class name is equal to block, in margin top four, large, it's going to be inline block, large margin top zero, text gray 800, and then the two hovers. So hover, text dark gray, and actually let's add margin right four. And when this is small, we want the width to be auto. Cool. So I'm gonna add profile, and then I'm going to do Option, shift down to duplicate these three lines. And then I'm going to change this to sign up like so. Now, as you can see here, it's complaining that we haven't defined nav bar open. So this is where we're going to define the simple hook that we're going to use to determine the state of our nav bar. Now, just above the return statement, I'm going to do const nav bar open or set nav bar nav bar open is equal to react dot use state and I'm going to say false to initialize it. Now we want this to be triggered to set nav bar open equal to true whenever this button element is, is pressed. So whenever we press this hamburger element this should toggle this state using this hook. So I'm going to open up this button element Get myself a couple of lines and then I'm going to do on click equals curly braces parentheses to define a function and then I'm going to do set nav nav bar open and then I'm just going to make it equal to the inverse of whatever nav bar open is currently set to like so. Perfect. Now with this in place, we can go back into our browser once again, and I am going to put it back up to normal 
which is quite small on this screen, I will admit. But as you can see here, when the app is in full screen mode or in desktop mode, it will show these two links on the right hand side. And whenever we go in a wee bit larger, this hamburger menu will now be able to trigger whether or not to show these links below our logo. Perfect. So within this particular episode, we've been able to create our first component, which was the reactive header component. And we've had a look at how we can use hooks within our React components in order to manage the state within those components. Now in the next episode in this series, we're gonna be looking at how we can interact or implement React Router into our application so that we can actually link between different views within our application.